the many things that God has given us, and he's given us many things. The best gift that God has given us is his son. Yes. We have been blessed by the son. Through Jesus Christ, really all of the other blessings are procured for us. Right. You know, I cannot claim, you cannot claim the blessings that God put on Abraham unless we have Christ. You really can't claim the blessings that are in the word of God if Jesus Christ was not provided. He is the door that is open. He is the way into the blessings of God. Hallelujah. He is the provision so that in Jesus Christ, everything else that God wants to do for you is provided in Jesus Christ. God will demonstrate through Christ Toward us the riches of his favor and his goodness, his grace, his mercy, and his love. Praise the Lord. By Jesus Christ, God's Son. Yes. Last week we saw that we were raised and made to sit together. We were enabled to walk with him and that we were able to stand with Christ. Right. So we can sit, walk, and stand with Christ Jesus. And it's not sitting and walking and standing in the life that we have now and say, well, I made it through another day. No, we are made to sit with him in the heavenly places. We, our walk has changed because we are now walking in the liberty of Christ Jesus. And we are able to stand against the wiles of the devil because of what Jesus Christ has done in us. We're talking about the limitless riches of Christ. Colossians 1 and verse 19. I want you to pay attention to these words. For it pleased the Father that in him, in Christ, all the fullness should dwell. And by him to reconcile all things to himself by Christ, by him whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. So Jesus Christ has made it possible for us to have this new relationship with the Father. Yeah, through you. the Lord Jesus Christ, God has determined to give us all things. I like that, that there is a secure method by which we can get the things that God wants to give us. It's not because I'm so good or you're so good. This week I was good and therefore the Lord's going to bless me. No, it's, it, I'm glad it doesn't work that way because which one of us were ever good enough to be saved? Which, which of us were good enough to be helped? Most of the time when I'm needing blessing and help is when I'm in trouble. And the goodness of God comes down to us through the goodness of, of Christ. For it pleased the Father that in Christ all the fullness should dwell. Pay attention to that word fullness. It gives us a clue of the riches that are in Christ Jesus. When we started this series, I showed you the ocean and I told you that there are limitless, boundless riches that are provided for us through Jesus Christ. In Christ, all of the fullness dwells. Now, what does that mean? All of the width, length, depth, and height, of it, all of the fullness of God is wrapped up in Jesus Christ, and that is made available to us. Romans chapter 8 and verse 32 from the Amplified he who did not withhold or spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also with him, with Christ, freely and graciously give us all other things? Can any of you in the room think of any other thing that you're needing? How do we get all of the other things? They are freely and graciously given to us because God did not spare his son, but freely gave him up 
for us so that we may be recipients of his goodness. Yeah, amen. Notice the fullness of the gift that God has given us. He doesn't measure his gracious mercy by the multitude of things that he has done for us, but he measures it by his son. Yes. The Son is the measure of what it is God is going to do for you. So if you, if you need to know what God is interested in doing in your life, turn your eyes upon Jesus Christ. Stay focused on the Lord Jesus Christ because there is the measure of how far God is going to go, is willing to go for you. So here lies the biggest blessing and probably some of the greatest problems we face. When you're facing adversity, sickness, difficulty, stress, problems, health issues, whatever, a lot of times Satan will come and he will try to draw your attention to how unworthy you are and that's why everything's happening. You woke up this morning and you were uglier than any other day. I'm not talking about the way you look. <laughs> and Satan wants to draw your attention to all you have done. And, and have you ever got hooked in that? Look what I've done. And, and have you ever asked the question, Lord, What's gone wrong in my life? Why are all of these things happening to me? Have any of you ever asked that question? Yes. Amen. The accuser wants to draw your attention and your focus onto you and what you have done and your worthiness and how, how good you have been and how bad you have been. But the focus of our life should be on the Lord Jesus Christ. Get your eyes off of your past. Get your eyes off of your weaknesses. Get your eyes even off of your present. And turn your eyes to the Lord Jesus Christ. Your victory is in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The answers for your life are in Jesus Christ. Right. If you need a turnaround in your life, you don't sit around and say, why me? Oh, man. What's wrong with me? What have I done this week that has caused this? You know, if you fall into that trap, Satan will just keep on pouring it on. Because really and truly, there's not a one of us. I would ask you to poke somebody, but I don't want you to do it. Uh, not a one of us is worthy of his goodness. His goodness comes down to us because God is such a good God that he freely gave up his own son so that he may freely and graciously give us everything else. All of these other things come because God is a good God. We have a Savior, Jesus Christ, and God has given his son so that you may be blessed. See, here's what Satan's goal is. Satan wants to turn everything around so that the limitless riches and grace mercy of, of God that are provided in Christ Jesus are because of me. All of a sudden, I have become so, so valuable that God just wants to do good to me. No, God wants to do good to you because he's looking through the blood and he's looking through the cross and he sees your deficit, he sees your need, he sees that you are needy and that he says, he says, because of the blood of my son, I have brought them in, they are now mine, I've claimed them, I've named them, I've accepted them, I've covered them, they are mine, hallelujah, and because of all of this, not because of your weaknesses, but because of his strengths, hallelujah, we are blessed. What have we been given in Christ Jesus? I, I, I don't know that it's possible for us to comprehend the unsearchable riches that are in Christ Jesus. The riches of his grace and the riches of his mercy that are completed and ready for us to inherit in Christ Jesus. I've often 
wandered in my humanness. How big is God's storehouse? Well, I don't know that he really has a storehouse, but if he does have a storehouse, it's, it's all prepared. I tend to think that whenever we need it, it's there. Have you ever gone to the grocery store and what you were needing was not there? How many times this week? Well, in God's storehouse, when you need it, it's there. It's always there. The completeness of the need has been prepared for us because that is the way that God works for his children. A perfect example of the inheritance that we have in Christ is seen in an Old Testament uh, man, God's provision for Abraham and for his descendants. Way back when Abraham was in Mesopotamia, in the city of Haran, God gave him a secure promise. God spoke to Abraham, and God said that he's going to lead him to a place and give him a city whose builder and maker was God, and that God was going to keep him, provide for him, that God was going to help him in every way that, that is possible. Genesis chapter 12 and verse 1. Now the Lord said to Abraham, Get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in all in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now that's a great thing, because Abraham and his wife Sarah, Sarai, at that time were already old and they didn't have any children and when God starts making this kind of promise most of us want to try to figure out how in the world is God going to do what he says he's going to do in my life I can't see how it's going to work but Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness and God did do exactly what he said he was going to do that's the way that God works Hallelujah. You see uh, if we were thinking in human terms, we would say, well, he went to the grocery store and it wasn't there. And he went to another grocery store and it wasn't there. Because he could not find it in the supplies that were natural. You see, what God is able to do, God is able to call into existence those things that are not in existence and make them a reality in our life. We don't have to wait until we see it in front of us for it to be a reality with God. God is able to do it. Yes, amen. So Abraham believed God. He left his homeland and he looked for that place that God had prepared for him. Later, God told Moses and Abraham's descendants that he would give them the land. Deuteronomy 11 and verse 22. For if you carefully keep all these commandments which I command you to do, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to hold fast to him, then the Lord will drive out all of these nations from before you, and you will dispossess greater and mightier nations than yourself. I like verse 24. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads shall be yours from the wilderness and Lebanon from the river, the river Euphrates, even to the western sea shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand against you. The Lord your God will put the dread of you and the fear of you upon all the land where you tread, just as he has said. God's blessing was secured for his people. The full provision was already ready. I, I want to tell you this right now. What you're needing right, right now in your life has already been provided and prepared for you. It is prepared blessings. Yes, amen. As soon as they were able to enter it and receive it, it was there. But God did something, and God said this in another place. I'm not going to drive them out until you're ready to go in and possess it. What, it, what he's saying is, the enemy is going to tend the land that I'm giving you and make sure that it's still healthy until the day that you are able to go in and receive it. 
And then when you're able to receive it, don't worry about how great and mighty they are. I will dispossess them and I will give you the inheritance that I've told you that I'm going to give you. Hallelujah. I don't know, make somebody shout. See, what happened with Israel is God's purpose for his people through Jesus Christ. What he's going to do in our lives. You're going to have battles. I would love to tell you that as soon as you came to Jesus Christ, all your battles are over. That would be a lie. Every one of you are going to have some battles and some conflicts. You're going to come against the adversary of your souls. Satan's going to try to defeat you. He's going to try to dis, dis, uh, uh, take away your inheritance that is in, in Christ. But you've got to start seeing things in God's mind. In God's mind, the inheritance is already possessed. You're already rich. You're already healed. Right, right. Through Jesus Christ, the answers that you are needing are already there. I know that that goes against our natural reasoning. God said, no enemy will be able to stand against you. And he also said, at every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, I have given it to you. Think about it right now. The Lord your God is able to do that for you. God is able to turn things around in your life. Now, I asked earlier, and I, I think we only touched the surface. Most of us in the room today, most of us who are listening, have problems in our lives. And we're facing situations and trials and tests. And sometimes we get our minds upon those things. I want you to try to get your mind on the things that God has prepared for you. The limitless riches of his mercy and his grace. His power to forgive. His power to save. His power to atone. His power to heal your diseases. His power to raise you up. His power to shield you from destruction. His power, the bounty of his blessings that he has daily laid up in store for you. God has these things ready for you. Thank you Lord. I, I know. Can I talk just plain with you? You might. Some of us have pain, problems, sicknesses, difficulties. I know it's a negative confession. How many of you have a negative confession? <laughs> it's, yeah. But here's the good news. Don't get stuck in that, but rather look. Look at how God has led you along. But the good news is, as soon as I am in that place, that I absolutely needed. It's amazing to me the number of times I walk up to the door and just about the time I run into it, the door opens. Just about the time I don't have another way to turn, God gives the way. He knows what you're needing. He's able to help you. He's able to supply. He's able to heal. He's able to deliver. Don't ever doubt God's ability to do this for you. Through him, every physical and spiritual blessing has been provided for us. In Christ Jesus, it's provided. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 1 and verse 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he has made us accepted in the beloved. All of the benefits are prepared. I want to tell you, the Lord has prepared more for you than what you understand. Not only has he prepared the, the bounty of his benefits, he has prepared Christ himself for us. 
Jesus Christ has been given for you. Now, if God is willing to give his only son for you, you should count yourself lucky. You, you should count yourself blessed. You should count yourself even a child of God because look what the Lord has done. He has saved me. Hallelujah. He has healed me. He who did not spare his son. In Romans 8 and verse 32, it says, He who did not spare his own son, but freely delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So I go in and I say, Lord, I'm in need. And God says, can I afford it? Can I afford to bless them? And he starts looking. By Christ Jesus, I can. John 3, 16, everybody quote it out loud with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life is eternal and abundant life. It covers the deficit, the demerit, the things, the failures that's going on in your life. All of those things. You are saved by his goodness and by his grace. You receive healing because of his goodness and his grace. First John 5 and verse 11 says, And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life. The question is this, do you have the Son? If you have the sun, wave at me. Hallelujah. Now look at this. Colossians 2 and 9. For in him all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form. And in him you have been made complete. And he is the head over all the rule, principality, and authority or power. The word fullness comes from the Greek word pleroma. Pleroma indicates that nothing is lacking. So all, all that is necessary is there. Now the word complete is made possible because of pleroma. The word complete comes from the Greek word pleroo, and complete means, listen to this, to make full. To literally cram full. To fill to the top so that nothing is lacking. To make complete in every detail. To make and furnish perfectly. To satisfy, to finish, to come to an end. To fully and completely supply. So of his fullness we are crammed full. There's an illustration that is taught to children. The illustration is you get a, a glass or a jar. You fill it with marbles or rocks. And you get it all the way to the full and you ask the kids, is it full? And the kids say, yes, it's full. And then you put real loose sand in it and you fill it all the way up to the top with sand and you ask the kids again, is it full? And they say, yes, it's full. And then you start pouring water in real slowly. And it's amazing that you can get water in on top of what is full. This is what God is doing for us through his fullness. He is making us complete so that nothing is lacking. Hallelujah. He who is the head over all rule and authority, all principalities and powers is working in your life. I want to tell you right now, you may not sense it. You may not feel it. You may not know it in your human knowledge, but God is working in your behalf right now. He is working so that he may do what he has purposed for your life. This is the bounty of the riches that are in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus, we are made complete. Would you say complete? In Christ Jesus, we are made complete. 
We are in Christ. Hallelujah. And in Christ Jesus, nothing is lacking. The very thing that you're going to need is going to be made available the moment you need it. See, he is the groom and we are the bride. He is the vine and we are the branches. He is the head. We are the body. He is the foundation that we are built on. A living church upon a living foundation. Everything that concerns our spiritual welfare is related to this in Christ. We are made complete in him. There is nothing lacking. No other sacrifice is necessary. No other thing needs to be done in order for God to do this in your life. He is working in your behalf right now. And out of his fullness, out of his fullness, out of what is the bounty of what is in him, he is supplying your need. Amen. Would you say the word enough? There's enough. There is enough. There's enough for you. I know I can't go by my feelings, but I can go by the reality that I am fully supplied. One of my favorite verses in Christ, there is now, therefore, no condemnation. Hallelujah. We are justified freely by his grace. We have eternal life by him. We are free from the law of sin and death. We have fellowship with him. We have been approved. We've been sanctified. We have hope. Everything that we are needing, his grace is sufficient for all of our sin, for all of your need. We are made to be increased in his strength. Hallelujah. Everything that we're needing to give us fullness of joy is provided in Christ. He has made our faith strong through Jesus Christ so that we are made more than conquerors through the Lord Jesus Christ. So what is it that I'm saying to you? God has brought you to a place of full assurance so that you do not have to go through all of these ups and downs in your faith. Even when you're going through difficult times, your faith is steadfast and it is sure because Christ has not changed. Hallelujah. His glory has not changed. His power has not changed. Hallelujah. Whatever it is you're needing in your life is already provided in him. Philippians 3 and verse 8. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. Here's the whole sum of it. If you get Christ, everything else comes along. I know some people try to petition Christ out and that he's only my savior. He's also my healer. He's also my deliverer. He's also my helper. He's my friend. Hallelujah. I look at Jesus Christ and everything I need in Christ Jesus is our wisdom. In Christ is our righteousness, our sanctification, our redemption, our joy, our life, our future. Everything that we're needing is provided in Christ Jesus. And the good news is you have been made a partaker, a shareholder, a joint heir with Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. If God is willing to give it to his son that he loves, mm -hmm. you are made a co-heir with Christ. So what God has provided freely for him is provided freely for you. Mm -hmm. 